This is probably now one of the faster models in the free wing lineup, but it can also be one of the, a 90 millimeter trainer, which is incredible. Give a nice axial roll across maybe? Sure. Like you were showing us before. I'm gonna go to high rates to get the highest performance of the roll. Cool. Pick the nose up, the nose up, roll. Nice. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Motion RC, and today we have an awesome flight review for you on the brand new Freewing F22 Raptor. This is a 90 millimeter nine blade fan on the 6S uh, plug and play option, which we have in front of us. It's running a 3748 by uh, 1750 kV motor, uh, brushless outrunner, 130 amp ESC, I believe with an eight amp BEC inside. It has the MCB-E, the new blue box, multi-function control box that we released with the L39 is also in this F22. And um, the scale, you know, upgraded stretch. This thing is super scale F22 and we're so excited because Project Foil is finally here. To my left, I have Patrick Crosdale. You might have recognized him now from a few videos on uh, Motion RC Fan Media. He was my pilot for today. Uh, so we can get this thing and he put it through its paces. What do we got about 20 flights on this At thing? At least, yeah. At least. So Patrick, just off the bat, what do you love uh, about the F-22? Well, first and foremost, scale fidelity, right? It, it, that word gets thrown around a lot, but man, look at it. It's yeah, I'll hold uh, it up. iconic uh, reproduction of the F-22. Nice um, and light. And, and the weight is amazing. And I would say the innovations in this airplane are probably what make it unique to the other birds that, that even I own um, as a 90 mil, I mean, it's it's super lightweight. And I think the tendencies in the, in the 90s past is they tend to be a little heavier because they've got all kinds of stuff in it. But man, this thing has just got power. Yeah, well, the beauty about the F-22, right? It's only been around since 05, so mm -hmm. about 13 years mm -hmm. old now. Um, you know, this is the future fifth generation of modern aircraft. So a lot of its best features are hidden. So mm -hmm. we didn't need to hang any sort of armaments off of it. Um, you will notice there might, you know, there's no lights on the wings, but what we wanted to show you, one of the best innovations we got is on the uh, the landing gear. So Patrick, flip the switch. All right. And we put these little rollers inside and you watch the wheel and watch what it does when it goes in. And it just sits. You know, mm -hmm. you were saying that other F-22s um, you know, in the past, the gears were coming, you know, forward right. to back and right. they couldn't get that scale, that yeah. scaleness and Alpha it's and difficult. Free Wing did great work here. It's difficult to do because normally the, the gear goes up in here and there's plenty of room to do it with, but to put it up into the wheel well, into the wing, is uh, quite a challenge. Yeah, it's it's really awesome. And also you have the uh, the doors. Now we put magnets on the doors for anybody who's concerned when you fly, sometimes your gear doors might, might be a problem for people open. So there are magnets that are gonna hold them tight, but it is servo driven. So you do have, and with the multi-function control box, you do have that uh, single stage or dual stage gear door port that this uses. So you're gonna get that nice, you know, they'll open up a couple seconds before the rest of the gear comes out. As far as assemblies, guys, uh, this was 12 screws. The two screws for the main wings, uh, two screws for the elevators, the full flying stabs, and two screws for the vertical stabilizers right here is gonna get it done. Um, and you're gonna be good to go. Like we said, the only light you're gonna have is on the nose gear. You wanna flip the, yeah. uh, we'll get it out. oh, I just hit you in the face with my <laughs> no wing. Worries. I'll Here's show you the down. nose gear. Here it is, coming down now. So you do have your landing light, so that'll, definitely help you on those dust nights, maybe a cloudy day, give you orientation when you're making your approaches. But there are no actual lights on the top of the model. We wanted to keep this, this plane clean. Some of the nice stealthy. features, stealthy, right? Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> shouldn't even be here. Um, <laughs> but Alpha did a lot of work. I mean, there's about 15 different colors of paint and decals already on it. You guys don't have to put any decals. And obviously with a jet like this, the only thing you'll really be changing is the designation, right? I mean, mm -hmm. every other F-22 is gonna pretty much look like yeah. this. And then uh, Alpha was saying he added some nice plastic uh, bits all around the edges, right? And that's going to help mm -hmm. keep, uh, you know, keep you from getting those rough, I dings guess, nicks and, and dings, yeah. you it know, keeps especially the sharp, sharp. Yeah, wing scrapes are going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, on any model, especially a model like this. We, mm -hmm. we saw a crosswind. <laughs> we came out here yesterday and it was a lot windier than it is today. And, you know, 
this plane wants to fly. Let's just say that. So if we get some wind, <laughs> that's going to help it out. But um, oh, nose cone, guys, it comes right off, which is awesome. Um, so again, for storage purposes, I was able to fit this in my minivan, no problem. There's a little bit of nose weight in there, and it's all plastic on the uh, nose cone, which is great. And then one of the things we love is the the paint job we did on the canopy. So he put a little like gold tint in there. So mm -hmm. at certain lighting, you're gonna get mm -hmm. that that gold versus- It's um, very distinct to the 22. Yeah. Whenever the F-22 flies, you can always see that gold canopy and it's, it's yeah. very pretty. I got a chance to see them at Wings Over Georgia and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was just awesome. But today what we're gonna do, we're gonna give you about three flights today. Uh, the first flight, Patrick, we put it through basically fast stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So big, big aerobatics and it flies great like that. But I think the most impressive, um, talk a little bit about it's maybe your first 90 mil. Sure. Um, as a first 90, I would say what it does well is transition from that uh, lighter floatier airplane at slow speeds where you do have this uh, blended wing and body where the whole aircraft provides a good lifting surface, not just the wings. So you can really slow the airplane down. And we did a couple of flights like that where we really get into that high alpha. As a matter of fact, with a light breeze, we got it to stop and just hang in midair. Um, <laughs> and and the, the, the beauty, the power is once she's hanging there, you just punch it and away she goes. She pushes herself out of it and back into normal flight. So it's, it's really impressive for a, a 90 mil and I think that's what makes it a great first 90 is yeah. it has that slow flight capability to really slow it down and savor its, its beauty and to land superbly and then to really punch it just put the power in and off she goes yeah I mean he did a bunch of takeoffs and landings touch and goes and every time it just looked easier and easier and I can only imagine guys who want to put a gyro in it um, you know again gyro is not a crutch it'll just help <laughs> you fly even better so uh, if you want to do that I'm probably gonna try that when I start getting now that we're done I'm mm -hmm. gonna start taking this thing to the field and <laughs> flying it myself but guys let's get started with the videos and the first ones up is the first flight aerobatics fast speed on a 6000 5s from Admiral let's do it We've got high rate set in I'm gonna take off with my first flap setting so the mid flap setting Perfect, and our wind is about 10 miles an hour occasionally. Anywhere between 8 to 10 miles an hour, so we'll see, but it's straight down the runway, so hopefully that'll help us out. All right, let's do it. All right, taking off left, right. All right, I'm easing the throttle in, getting the airplane to move down the runway. As it gets going straight, we'll full power. Full power's coming in, tracking nice and straight. There's the beautiful. Can't beat that. Now you've been flying this about, we put about 10 to 12 flights on her this morning. Mm -hmm. And you've been loving her, right? Man, this is probably one of the most easy, slow flying jets that I've seen, and she's quick. So I've got the gear up, I've got the flaps up, I've gone from high rate to low rate. I'm gonna give us a nice pass. Beautiful. Power's all the way out, easing the power back in as I get down the runway. The vertical at the end. That Looks at a roll. Down. And then roll it back through, let it drop, and you see how it floats. It's just so light, so much surface area. Dropping back down, no throttle. Easing back in with the throttle. Still the big loop right here in the middle. As you can see, she carries the speed all the way through the top and then pushes herself over. I can go idle power now, and down she comes. Wow, listen to that. Yeah, in fact, let's do a pass and we'll just take a listen to the throttle as she comes by. I like the sound of that. Shutting up. Blade. Is it 12 blade, correct? This is, uh, I believe this is a 9 blade in here. 9 blade, okay. So she sounds really good for a 9 blade. 8S will be the 12 blade setup. So again, guys, this is the 6S plug and play. And this thing went together when I built it. About 12 screws and a little bit of glue for a few peripherals gets her done. Let's give ourselves a nice pass with the belly. Tuck under turn. We'll bring it back for another pass, maybe a vertical midfield, what do you think? I love it. So I'm staying on low rates this whole time because carrying speed, this airplane, you want to have it locked in on the low rate. A couple of rolls. I love it. Now for this first flight, guys, the whole purpose was opening her up, big aerobatic maneuvers, nice scale jet. And we'll put in another pack and we're gonna do a lot of like trainer-like maneuvers and also show you some of the great slow flight you can perform with this, because this is probably now one of the faster models in the free wing lineup, but it can also be one of the, a 90 millimeter trainer. 
which is incredible. Give a nice axial roll across, maybe? Sure. Like you were showing us before. I'm going to go to high rates to get the highest performance of the roll. Cool. Pick the nose up. The nose up, roll. Nice! All right, I got my one minute warning on the camera, or on my uh, radio. So I'm gonna go ahead pass? and start to set up for a dirty pass. Yeah, let's show us, try to show us the gear the way you did. Okay. I've got the high rate since I'm gonna slow the airplane down. I'm starting to come in with my flaps. I've got 55 selected. Now I've selected the gear. And if the gear's selected, she'll come out with a nice scale speed. Down they come. And like the L39 with this blue box, you're gonna get about a two to three second delay on your gear. So just be mindful of that. We're gonna land left to right here. Now this airplane does this fairly well from this field. This is difficult from this direction. That looked so difficult, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, this jet really makes that look easy. Um, landing from that direction on most jets is yeah. extremely hard just because it's such a tight area. This airplane slows down so well that to line it up and set it on the runway is easy. Nice. Can't beat it. Now let's walk out there while we got the cameras rolling and we're going to go test our, uh, let's check our voltage. Absolutely. What was your flight time on that? That was a, a, a full three minutes. Okay. Uh, now, when I do three minutes, I time mine off of power, so not a flight time. That was three minutes of throttle usage. Gotcha. So my flight times usually vary between three minutes and 30 seconds to about four minutes, and that's with open wide throttles, full climbs, regular aerobatics in it. Okay, so let's open her up. And look at this large again, guys. Large canopy, you can put so much, so much room for activities in here. <laughs> That's someone I knew used to say. Pass. Battery nice and warm on a bit of the chilly Georgia day. Mm -hmm. Plug her in. I'm at 15%, so 3.768 or 678? 768. Almost a storage charge. Almost a storage charge. So, so you could fly it longer. I tend to like to be nice to the batteries. Yeah, I mean, I, I with a jet, that's where I like to land, but that gives you enough if you don't like that first approach. You can at least get around another time Absolutely. And, and try it again. So uh, what we're gonna do now, we'll put another 5006S in and uh, Patrick's gonna show you some trainer-like uh, flying and we might be able to push this battery closer to four minutes if we're flying slow. But more slow stuff and we gotta show that, that high alpha, high alpha and sure. just holding it. All right, let's do it. All right guys, so second flight about to come up. Now, if you wanna do, I don't know if you necessarily need to do this for trainer, mm -hmm. soul like capability, but mm -hmm. for some high alpha stuff, you're definitely gonna wanna shift your CG aft a little bit in the airplane. So Patrick, you were doing this before. Let's yeah. uh, let's get into it. So when we first started putting the battery into the jet, we were do, uh, using the book recommended CG and the book puts it right at about the first opening in the wood. I don't know if you can see in there and see that, but right about there is where it has it for the book recommended CG. When we started to play with some slower flight characteristics, maybe even some high alpha and even some hovering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got the battery maybe about an eighth to even a half inch back from that just to slide the CG a little bit more aft to help you with that uh, nose high attitude. So not, not terribly far, and that's just because my personal taste, my personal throws in the airplane, I like it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So feel free to experiment, but that's yeah, where I course. like it. And this thing can take, guys, this could take, uh, you know, our biggest pack in the Admiral line now is that 5100 carbon, which we're gonna do a third flight of just with that pack. Um, but, you know, our largest pack is the 5006S Admiral. It's fantastic pack but you can go up to 6,000 I think mm -hmm. I know there's a, a brand that does a 6250 you're gonna have no problem uh, I don't think with weight in this aircraft because it Absolutely. is such a light air flame, uh, airframe air flame uh, <laughs> but I had it next to my f4 um, at home and, and you know you can the weight versus both aircraft you can really feel it on this plane so you know the wind likes this thing absolutely <laughs> it wants to stay in the air so let's absolutely. put it up for this next flight all right guys flight number two and again we have a fresh 5000 milliamp 6s admiral in there with the uh, battery a little aft as we showed you and let's let her rip trainer right. style some fresh wind as well yeah it looks here like the wind picked up a little bit but it's straight down the runway here we go taking off left to right Easing the power in, 
going to full power, letting her rip. Put the gear up, we're going to leave it in high rate, we're going to leave the flaps at 50%, which is that first flap setting. Okay. I'll get her back into the wind, and I'm going to slow the airplane up, and try to get her into a little bit of a high alpha. Love it. So we've got the first flap setting in, letting her slow. As the airplane slows, ease the power back in. A little bit of elevator to keep its nose in the air. And there she is, just hanging there, folks. That is awesome. Look at that. He's just hanging there. And punch it. Watch this thing push out. Out she comes. Back into normal flight. Gobs and gobs of power. <laughs> <on this thing. laughs> yeah. Well, that new nine blade setup has really been just a great option. You know, a lot of people were concerned for the sound, but I don't mm -hmm. know, this thing sounds fantastic to me with the nine blade. We're gonna do that again this time with a full flap, so 100% flaps. Okay. Letting it slow, nose coming in the air. As the nose is in the air, ease in with the power. Ease in with the power. If you have to help uh, steer with the rudder, please do, but as you can see there, look at her just hanging there. If there were clouds in the sky, they wouldn't even be moving, guys. It's barely, <laughs> it's barely moving. <laughs> we just happened to get the perfect Georgia blue sky day, so you can't really tell. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in high rate. Yep. I've got flaps up. And let's see if we can't get the jet to stand on her tail a little bit. So I'm going to come back here for some spacing. Give us a little pass. Just a nice clean pass to say hello. Hmm. Hello. Let's wrap it back around and get the sun at its back. I'm going to try to get just a little bit of hang time out of it. So I'm going to go into the vertical, get it nice and slow, full power, full power, full power, hold it, hold One, it, hold it, hold two, it, hold it. Three. And there she comes off the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Alpha said on the 6S setup, you get about two to three seconds of hang time. With the 8S setup, you might be able to hang it for about six, seven seconds, which so, would be awesome. Let's try to do a couple of approaches. Now, again, we're doing it from a difficult direction on this, uh, on this field. So I'm going to throw the gear out, and I'm going to touch and go. I, let's, let's try and see how it goes. <laughs> let's give it a go. So let's get a dirty pass here to make sure everything's looking the way it should. There's our dirty pass. we got 50% flat. Good to go. And ease some headwind here for that landing. Let's go ahead and roll the flaps into our 100. Make our approach. I'm going to go to idle throttle to help with the speed. Turn it in towards the wind, easing back in with the throttle now to carry that momentum. All the way down to the runway. A little bit of power. A little flare. Awesome. We got the perfect wind for this right now. So you can see that the stability on this airplane is amazing. And the two vertical uh, stabilizers really do help with a jet like this. And that big, wide, underbelly keeps her nice and stable so even just down the runway just kind of cruising you can see she can just just hang now obviously if you guys can fly with a gyro that's probably only gonna you know that'll yeah. further add to the to the stableness the stability absolutely this airplane has no gyro in it today but i think if she did it would be even more ridiculous on, on its stability so i've got my timer coming down from the 10 seconds we'll make one pass here and we'll land left to right again one dirty pass, into the wind, into the brake. Now we're going to land left to right. A little bit of a headwind. Again, all the way out with the power to help with the speed, letting the nose drop. Easing, Easing back in with the power to keep the momentum up. A little bit of a little bit of a cross, but not bad. Down to the runway, and that ease of power out. And there she is. Woo! A little bit of cross. A little bit of aerodynamic braking with the elevators there, and oh, <laughs> The stop. There we go. <laughs> there she is. Let's check those that voltage again. Where were Absolutely. you on that? So at about eight seconds left on that. Again, that's that three minutes of useful flying time. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think it should always be. Or I should say three minutes of useful throttle time. Gotcha. So if you're at idle, it's not counting. So our flight times, you'll see. I'm sure when you get to the, you can scroll at the bottom of your screen and see the flight time <laughs> yeah. is longer than three minutes. But I will have put the. Uh, I'll put the flight time in the video as well. You'll see it, but let's check her out again. Stay there, canopy. Unplug. Battery feeling good. 
And where were you? Four? Three minutes meant, of useful time? Yeah, three minutes of useful throttle time. Boom, same thing. 3772, but 15%. Mm hmm. Give me a little tilt back. There you go. Like now. that? Now I can see the numbers there. There it is. And out of a 90, honestly, today, that's really good. That's a good Most one. 90s for me to fly down to that storage charge, usually more like two and a half minutes of useful throttle time. Yeah. So a three minute useful throttle time on a, on a 90 today is quite impressive. Now, the 90s you've, you've flown, you have the F4. Oh, man, I've got the F4, the F16. Uh, let's see what else I have in the 90 range. And even other companies doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have I do have the uh, flex jet. Okay. Uh, and the flex jet is good about. Is that the 90? Uh, that's a 90. Yeah. It is a 90. And, and the flex jet actually is is this is about on par with the flex jet. In fact, I I would venture to say that if you threw a gyro in this airplane, you're going to be a competitor with the H the uh, flex jet. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a nice plane, but this. This, this is gorgeous. So I think for our last flight now, we're going to throw in the 5100 carbon and let Patrick just let it rip. We'll let it rip. That's the way to go. <laughs> this is awesome. I can't wait to fly it. Ah! All right, guys, third and final flight on this flight review here. Patrick, let's show them where to put the Admiral Carbon. Anybody right. who's flown this thing knows the point of these, you're not getting those sag, man. They're, you're going to get that punch uh, through the whole flight and disregard <laughs> little gasser going off in the background sounds like a cox motor or something but you know all right so we got our 5100 70c battery um, it does have a little more weight than the uh the regular 5000s but actually i think without a gyro it helps this airplane she's such a, a big uh, expansive airplane it's so lightweight that if you throw a little weight into it without the gyro it's gonna help settle the airplane down um, so i'm gonna put it in and i'm gonna use the cg point just a little more aft because it is heavy as you can see i go about halfway between you see where the uh, first notch on the wood piece is here? I go about halfway there, or another good reference would be the screws at the back. You can place the 5100 right at those screw heads. And okay. that's, that's kind of where I like it. It keeps the airplane a little bit more nose heavy, but when you're gonna be uh, scooting around the sky, sometimes it helps having that nose drive the bus. Sounds good. I can't wait to see her go on this. We were doing all slow-mo uh, for the product video on the Carbon. We haven't filmed it yet with regular motion. I'm excited. All right. I think we might want to give him a chance to get out of the sky because uh, yeah, I, want, want, I want to own it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could right. sneak up behind him maybe and shoot him down. There we go. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, third flight, Admiral Carbon 5170C. Patrick, whenever you're ready. All right, we got a little bit more weight in the airplane. We got 50 flaps again. I'm on my high rates. I'm going to start taking off left to right. Easing the throttle up into full throttle. Here she comes. There's the full. Not bad. Flaps are coming up. I'm taking her off her high rate. I'm going to let her move. Nice. I got a little bit of up trim to help myself. Just from seeing it before, you can really feel the punch. I'm All excited right. about this pack. Here we go. Full pass. Full power coming in. Let the nose drop down. Get the speed built up. Here she comes. I need a vertical in it. Let it roll. She just go for days. Powers all the way out as I let it drop back down. Pick up the speed. Ease back to about half drop. Now you think you could comfortably cruise this thing, cruise this thing around about like 30%? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it could do it. It could hang with its nose up there just like the slow fly stuff. But if you really want to punch it, she'll do it. Here's another high speed. Give it a better. Nice. <laughs> Do a little tuck under turn here. You almost fooled me. <laughs> almost got me. Almost tricked you. <laughs> we'll let it come back down the center line. As we get down towards center line, power comes back to full. Vertical at the end of the field. Let's go into Cuban 8. Go over the top, idle throttle, roll her back with, uh, into the uh, horizontal. Power in, back to the roof. Nice big Cuban 8. Throttle comes out, manage the speed, roll it back over. Nice big Cuban 8. Fantastic. Another check under turn. Let's do an axial roll, just the aileron roll as you refer to it. Down the runway, power comes in to full. Let's get some speed, speed, speed. We'll go high rate vertical roll. She'll do it. Back in the low race. Keep her stable. All dead. 
maybe a, a nice big barrel roll here. So we'll go power in, 45 off the direction we're going to travel up and over the top. Power's coming back out to slow her down. Nice big barrel roll. Vertical at the end of the field. Back into the airbag box to play. In fact, I wonder how does a four point look like? Let's see. Up, one, two, three. Very <laughs> oh, now you're showing off. <laughs> this airplane is easy to do it with. Get the power back in. On a V-tail like this, is knife edge harder? You know, we haven't tried that quite just yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, usually with a twin tail airplane, the rudders have a lot more effectiveness. Because I know the L39 knife edge is like a beast. It but does. It does it really well. It's built for it. But this airplane here with two tails, it's going to be a lot quicker to roll itself with the uh, twin tail. There's a knife edge. That was very, a turn. <laughs> very, very subtle movement in the yeah. airplane. She wants to roll. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm not that good of a pilot. So I'm going <laughs> to power in and give ourselves a vertical to the No, I think you're definitely doing the F-22 justice. we got about 25 seconds left on this pack. So I'm going to go ahead and set us up with another dirty pass. I'm going back into high rates, first flaps, first set of flaps, and gear switch is pull. You can see the time frame's going to take. Now they start to come out. There they are. Okay. We're going to definitely set ourselves up for another left to right. She's nice and dirty. Power in. Turn her back around and get her set up for that left to right landing. And now with the gear down, you'd show up on radar, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. All right, so we got our 100 flaps. Got my high rate in. Put the power back in to watch the descent. Manage that descent. Power is a little bit eased in. A little flare. He's happy there. Look at that. Nice thing. Roll off in the grass. Brakes. Brakes, brakes, brakes. There she is. There it is. Awesome. Can't beat it. <laughs> and I'm zoomed right in your face. <laughs> we got another camera there. Patrick, thank you so much Enjoy for flying it. this for us today. Patrick was flying the L39. You'll see him do some more flights to help us out because I'm not yet ready to give you a flight review of the F-22 so on my own. Getting there, getting real close. But uh, actually, real quick, before we get out of here, we're gonna end you off with a couple of takeoffs and landings from grass because Alpha did put those tires, aren't true scale to the F-22. They are a little bigger, beefier for all you grass guys. Uh, I think with the weight of this model, you're gonna have no problem flying off short grass fields. Uh, so let's show you it and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.